Hey, good morning, everyone. How are you? Um, I am excited to chat with you today for our Monday morning marketing and coffee about my top favorite, my five favorite sales books. And, um, you know, I've found weirdly that, you know, moving into sales responsibilities for my business, um, that sales and marketing are very complementary. And, you know, I originally thought, you know, I'm going to get into this. I'm going to be, you know, full on on the marketing, storytelling, soft, uh, the soft stuff, the feel good stuff. And I found eventually that being part of sales, not only, you know, for our, our business hook agency, but before this, for my old agency, being part of sales and supporting sales was super, super important. So I want to talk through five books that I've read in the last two or three years that have been really helpful as far as figuring out how to get more sales and how to, you know, take the principles from sales and use them in marketing. So a couple things. Um, the first one is the 10 X rule by Grant Cardone. So I love, love, love this book. Um, and I'm gonna, you know, put the link in the the description here shortly. Um, but 10x rule by Grant Cardone is really just about setting bigger goals. So we're always, you know, told to set reasonable goals and to, you know, just be reasonable. And Grant Cardone talks a lot about, hey, what is reasonable anyways? And what if you took your your most important goal and you multiplied it by 10? And what would you have to do to get to that? What would what plan would you put in action if you had to get to 10x what you thought your goal was before? So in that case, it's usually leveling up and it's usually not the same things that would get you to 2x what your goal is. It's not just an increase in effort from what you your previous goal would, would be, it would be an actual change of the systems and making your systems more efficient um, so that you could reach a 10X level goal. So I love, love, love that book and it's really helped me in the way I'm thinking about sales. Um, the next one, um, five favorite sales books here. The next one is Pitch Anything. So this book was really, really illuminating for me in that this guy talks a lot about how just, you know, just explaining your product or service really, really well is not always the most convincing thing because especially if you're in a field or your, your uh, product is in a field where it's somewhat technical, people's brains turn off. They turn off when, when you talk the technical language, you, you, it's counterintuitive because you think that if you just explain all the detail of how it works and you, you think that if you can really show your intelligence that somebody is going to want to buy that product or service, but it's not always the case. Sometimes using as simple of language as you possibly can is way, way more persuasive than being super technical. So pitch anything talks a lot about that. It talks about the two sides of the brain and how one of them, you know, responds really well to storytelling and the other side of it, the, the other side of the brain shuts off when somebody gets technical because we get scared. We get scared that somebody's talking over our head and we don't, we don't want to, we, we assume like evolutionarily, we assume that there's possibly a somebody trying to trick us. So we run away or we, you know, we want to get out of that conversation. So rather than going technical, simplifying, simplifying and um, using stories instead is what the guy talks a lot about in pitch anything. Um, so I'm going to put two Grant Cardone books in this top five sales books. The other one is sell or be sold. And in this book, Grant Cardone talks a lot about how if you're not 100% sold on your product or service, 
how you have to get there. That's the number one most important thing. Um, if you're bumping up against prospects or you're, you know, you're working on selling your product or service or what, whatever it happens to be, and the other person can convince you that maybe it's not so valuable and maybe you should lower your price or so on and so forth, um, that's because you weren't sold enough. You weren't sold enough on your value and getting super sold, figuring out how and what you need to do to get 100% sold. So if you need to up the value of what you're delivering, so it is the number one most valuable version that they could possibly buy, then maybe you need to up the value. Um, and maybe you need to get 100% sold because that is the most persuasive thing you can possibly do is be utterly convinced that people should buy from you. And so Seller Be Sold is another one of my top five favorite sales books. So good. Grant Cardone is just, you know, he's the man. He's really, really intense. And I partly like it because he just... It's enthusiasm, right? Enthusiasm is infectious. That's why I try to be a little bit enthusiastic on these Monday morning marketing things because I know that enthusiasm is infectious and I'm trying to give a little bit of my enthusiasm to you. I'm trying to have enthusiasm most of the time on these. Um, but yes, it, enthusiasm is infectious. So whenever I listen to you know Grant Cardone, and I know people, a lot of people hate him, but uh, Gary V. I just, you know, it's not as much, it's not always for the info as it is just to get pumped. And I do think enthusiasm is, you know, important in my work. So, okay, so number four is the pumpkin plan. So funny name, really solid concepts. The, the author of the pumpkin plan talks a lot about how these farmers um, grow these giant award-winning pumpkins and the concepts that lead to growing these giant award-winning pumpkins can also be transferred into creating a, a service business that services high value clients and is extremely valuable to the clients it serves. So a couple of the concepts being, you know, you start with a good seed, right? Weirdly, these pumpkin seeds for giant pumpkins are more expensive by weight than gold because of how important the seed is in getting the right, you know, um, pumpkin. So same with your business, starting with a great idea is super important. And then number two, it's they, they actually um, trim off any dead weight so that they trim off pumpkins that don't look like they're going to be award-winning pumpkins. And, um, and, and that would mean that you trim off any clients that you feel are not going to allow you to be the, your absolute best service provider. And that's, you know, counterintuitive because people think you just want to get as many clients as you possibly can. And, but in the end, if you're trying to grow these, you know, these pumpkins where it's, you're the absolute most valuable service provider for them. And if, you know, that they have a great experience with you, that you might have to let go of some of the clients that you're not providing that value and they don't see the value or, or whatever it happens to be. So the pumpkin plan is a really great book for getting into these. It seems esoteric, the, the idea of these giant pumpkins, but it really does relate to sales and getting you know your best clients or customers that you possibly can. And then lastly, a book called Book Yourself Solid. You know, when I first started freelancing and doing web design, I read this book and a couple of the concepts that were super, super important that I that I felt like I got a lot from were Making a list, first of all, of your absolute ideal clients, all the ones that you have right now, make a list of your top five, your top 10 ideal clients that you have. And then secondly, describe them. Use descriptive words to describe your ideal clients or customers and really get specific. Figure out what those people are like. Figure out what they're looking for. And then focus your entire marketing and sales plan 
on those absolute ideal customers. Because if you have some specific things that you know all of your ideal customers do, they're responsive, they really care about their customer, like I'm B2B, so I'm talking to you know other companies. They really care about their customers, you know, those types of things. You make that list, you figure out what the bullet points are about your ideal customers, and then you have to start, you know, either trimming the not ideal customers or you need to start really going after and being, you know, intentional about getting these absolute ideal people. And Book Yourself Solid has a bunch of other exercises in it. It's wonderful. I think any kind of service provider um, would benefit from reading the book, Book Yourself Solid. It's really, it's, it has a lot of very specific kind of exercises to go through and to figure out, you know, first of all, your ideal customers, but also like putting together this plan to go after more of them. And, you know, those are my five favorite sales books. Once again, they're 10X Rule, Pitch Anything, Seller Be Sold, The Pumpkin Plan, and Book Yourself Solid. I really appreciate you guys joining me this morning for Monday Morning Marketing and Coffee. And, yo, Jody, sorry, I just said your uh, comment. Nice to say what's up. And of course, my sign off is always, find something about what you love. Sorry, find something about what you do that you love and try to do a little bit more of that this week. And I really appreciate you guys joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day. All right, bye.